Living in the information age has its pros and cons. It is nice to have the whole world at your fingertips. Or should I say on your smartphone? What would take a genius a lifetime to learn is now seconds away when you press search. But that power did not come without a price. For one thing, there is so much information that you just don't know where to start. Second, it is impossible to tell the right information from the wrong. That is why I decided to make this series of videos. I want to share with you the amazing new discoveries I've found. Of course, as an added bonus, I will share my opinion with you. I am not a rocket scientist, but I am a very curious and logical person. So before I put my video out, I would have at least verified the information. The number one question on almost everybody's mind for the last 10,000 years must be, are we alone? Since the introduction of the Drake Equation in 1960, chances of not having celestial neighbors is probably zero. Do you remember NASA announced in 1996 that they found proof of primitive life on early Mars? I was fascinated. I was disappointed when NASA retracted it. Now, you can see the debate is still ongoing. Now, if you type UFO sightings, Google will return 3,130,000 results in 0.86 seconds. With this many sightings, pictures, and videos, how come we still haven't found our celestial neighbors? So let's start with some recent discoveries of some habitable planets. Other than Mars, Wolf 1061c was our closest habitable planet when it was found in December 2015. A team of astronomers in New South Wales found it orbiting the red dwarf star Wolf 1061. They were only 14 light years from Earth. Actually, scientists found three planets. All three may be rocky planets like the Earth, but Wolf 1061c sits right in the Goldilocks zone the zone known to harbor life. Because red dwarfs are dimmer than our sun, its planets must be close to it to harbor life. 1061c is tidally locked with a star, meaning one side of the planet always faces the star. Kind of like our moon has its dark side. This also means the massive thermal would create atmospheric storms. In plain words, it is not a place where you want to live in. Basically, the scientist gave our dwarf neighbors the death sentence, even though we just found them and knew little about them. That is probably why people have paid little attention to the European Southern Observatory's discovery in August 2016 of the Proxima Centauri b. It is also an exoplanet within the habitable zone of orbiting the red dwarf star Proxima Centauri our sun's closest neighboring star. It is located only about 4.2 light years away in the constellation of Centaurus and is in the Goldilocks zone. Of course, scientists said it was probably not habitable as it has strong solar winds. But scientists also once thought flying and space travel were impossible. So I won't give up on them so quickly. Since the possible planet Wolf 1061c was discovered 14 months ago, we then found Proxima Centauri b in August 2016. What do you think we will find in 2017? We know there are millions of stars like our Sun, and there are millions of planets like Earth. Actually, based on new revised assumptions, Drake Equation predicted the existence of 156 million planets like Earth, what do you think we will find next? Of course, when I see a theory, I usually have to come up with my own crazy theory. <laughs> Let's think for a while. The destroyer planet Nibiru mentioned in the 6,500 year old Sumerian tablet is now thought to be orbiting a dwarf star. If scientists can convince us a dwarf star is unlikely to harbor life, we probably will never find life on Nibiru right? I don't know enough to prove or disprove that theory, but I want to show you something. In 1974, Dr. Frank Drake and Carl Sagan sent to space the following messages. Number one, the numbers one to ten. Number two, the atomic numbers of the elements hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, 
oxygen, and phosphorus, which make up deoxyribonucleic acid, our DNA. The formulas for the sugars and bases in the nucleotides of DNA. For the number of nucleotides in DNA and a graphic of the double helix structure of DNA. Five, a graphic figure of a human. The dimensions are physical height of an average man and the human population of Earth. Six, a graphic of the solar system indicating which of the planets the message is coming from. Seven, a graphic of the Arecibo radio telescope and the dimensions of the transmitting antenna dish. This message was long forgotten till August 21st, 2001, when an answer appeared in the form of a crop circle in Chilbolton, England. The message stated that they are made of silicon instead of carbon, with an extra DNA strain and have changes in the number of nucleotides. They seem to be shorter, but with a big head. At the spot where we showed our radio transmitter, they showed a crop field, as that was how best to send the message to us. And instead of our Earth being the third rock from the sun, they showed they occupied the third, fourth, and fifth planets in their system. While the message was from the fifth rock, it sounded too good to be true, right? Most scientists call what they can't explain a hoax, so no endorsement on this alien graphic yet. However, three rocky planets. Doesn't that sound like the three planets we found in December 2015? Remember, 1061C is definitely in the Goldilocks zone, while 1061D is right on the edge. 1061B may be too close to the sun, but how do we know it is not a hotbed for some hotties? Another recent finding may also be relevant to our search for celestial companions. For a long time, we have thought our sun is the only star in our solar system. But since the discovery of the first Kuiper Belt object in 1992, we have found more than 100,000 such celestial bodies over 100 kilometers in diameter. Then we found the Oort cloud objects. Sedona has an orbit of 11,000 years, while 2014 FE72 has a crazy 90,000 year orbit. You have to wonder, what is on the other side of our solar system? Some people now believe our sun is locked with another star. This theory was boosted when Sedona was found. This theory provides support to Sedona's long orbit. In an effort to search evidence for this theory, Tau Micron All Sky Survey spent four years with three infrared wavelengths. They discovered 173 brown dwarfs, but none of them seemed to be our sun's long lost twin. Is the case closed? Of course not. UC Berkeley's Richard Muller suggested in 1984 a red dwarf 1.5 light years away can be the reason for the Earth's mass extinction every 27 million years. Of course, it can be brown or white dwarf, and it can be 1.5 or 5.1 light years away. Remember the finding of the 2014 FE72 pushed our solar system's boundary another threefold. So now, let's take a look at the three planets and these supposed alien messages. Is Wolf 1061 the friendly alien neighbor that sent us this message? Or could it be the mysterious Proxima Centauri B? Remember, that is only 4.2 light years away. Do you know how far away the Oort cloud is, where all these minor planets are from? Scientists have found comments from Oort clouds that have traveled from three light years away. That means 4.2 light years is still in our neighborhood. I know I can't unlock the unknown with a short video like this, but I hope I have unlocked your curiosity on this. And maybe together we will find the truth. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.